with the way that the interwebs is, it's so easy to become a coach mm -hmm. or yeah. to get into the online space, right? And I think people underestimate the, the work that's necessary, the trials, the tribulations, the ups, the downs, right? Like what it actually takes to become a successful coach. Long How's it going, everybody? Xander Fryer, CEO and founder of High Impact Coaching here uh, with the amazing Leslie Thornton. Uh, Leslie is a hypnosis for weight loss coach. Um, and Leslie, I'm going to let you kind of dig into your background a little bit. But, uh, you know, I wanted to I, I was really excited to get you on, uh, uh, get you on the podcast, get you on the show today to, to kind of run through uh, mainly the fact that you just made forty five thousand dollars in the first three weeks in December. Um, despite December being a notoriously difficult month for coaches, um, and, uh, and you're a hypnosis for weight loss coach. So this is an offer that I had never heard of before until we, until we started talking. Um, so I'm really excited to dig into, you know, a lot of the learning lessons you had getting to a point of, you know, being able to enroll multiple six figures in, in your space. And obviously the mindset that it takes to get you there. I think you're an expert in that space. Um, so excited to, excited to run through your story, Leslie, but, uh, welcome to the show. Yeah. Thanks so much. I'm excited to talk to your audience and make things happen for other people as well. Awesome. So, uh, the, yeah. So first question I just wanted to ask is, uh, you know, I'd love people to kind of get a, an idea of you, how you became a coach, how it all started. Cause I think we all have such amazing stories of how we became coaches. So what's, what's yours? Yeah, for sure. So I started out working as a registered nurse. And prior to that, um, I think I became a nurse pretty much because I was really obsessed with my own health and wellness. And to be perfectly honest, like I was always crazy about like food and dieting and exercising and my weight and like, I can't gain weight or else, you know, whatever. And people are going to think bad about you and all this kind of stuff. I was told I had a slow metabolism at a very early age in life. And so I think that story really stayed with me. And then it just became this like trying to control things left and right, back and forward and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's, I, it's amazing how like that one statement can just create so many issues, right? One story yeah. when you're eight years old, that's just like, Oh, I'm different than my sisters. They have fast metabolisms. I have slower ones. I don't belong. I have to work really hard. All these kinds of things. Yeah. And it sets you up for your entire life. Um, so really when things started changing for me, Xander was when I think I was like 13 years old and my, I had a headache and I was sitting with my aunt in the kitchen. And I told her I had a headache and she told me to close my eyes. And she walked me through this exercise of like, what shape is your headache? And what color is your headache? And on a scale from one to 10 and like all these different kinds of things like that. And then after she walked me through that, she had me open up my eyes and my headache was gone. Yeah. And it was like the most amazing, incredible thing. And I think because of that experience, I became like, I always was more holistic and not really into like modern day medicine. Cause I'm like, you don't need medicine to fix your headache. Like just close your eyes. And like, there's other ways. Like I became yeah. aware of like the power of my own mind and like, of just sitting with that. Yeah. So I think, I think that's, that's amazing. Like your first experience with like psychosomatic work was at 13 years old. Yeah. Like, it that's pretty, like you have to say that's pretty lucky. That's pretty, I think, you know, most people, most people will never experience psychosomatic work let alone at like 13 years old. Oh my God. So, and again, that also changed the trajectory <laughs> my entire life. So um, I got to the end of my rope with dieting and exercising. I studied abroad in Mexico. I gained a bunch of weight and I was like fat and happy. And then all of a sudden I found myself six months later back in the States, like, I hate the way I look, like all the normal things going on in my brain. And I was like, I can't do one diet again. Like I'm yeah. net, like I have to figure this thing out. If there's other people in the world who have figured out this weight loss thing and they're not suffering with this kind of stuff all the time, then I can too. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know what was going to happen, but I was actually living in San Francisco and I ended up stumbling upon hypnosis and I was like, oh my God the permanent solution for weight loss. Like, what is this crap? Like, no way. Like I'm a nurse. If, if this worked, they would have taught me this nursing yeah, school. Yeah, right. the whole thing, no? But I was really desperate and I was like, all right, I'll try anything at this point. So I ended up trying the hypnosis and prior to listening to the hypnosis, like 
if there was cookies in the cabinet or ice cream in the freezer, it was like, there was like a cord that was like pulling me to those things. Like I couldn't stop myself, you know, it was yeah. like so crazy strong. So that was there before. And then I listened to it and I woke up the next day and it wasn't like, it was like, there's this extra like tingly feeling in my, like, it's just, I don't know. It was like the world looked a little bit different, slowed yeah. down. It was like, I knew that the ice cream was there. I knew that the cookies were there but I didn't have to have them. Yeah. It was like for the first time ever in my life, I just felt like I was like sitting back and just being this like witness to my surroundings. And I had this like crazy freedom of choice. And I remember like I went for a run that day, like San Francisco Hills and like previously you'd be like, oh my God, like I'd have to stop. And I'd be like, I don't really have to stop. It's just a thought in my brain that's telling me to stop. Like I could keep going, like my body's still able, like. And then my whole world just became so fascinated about like, what can my mind create? Like, yeah. if I can get past this thing that was haunting me my entire life by listening to a recording and waking up the next day, like, what else can I create? Yeah. And so then I ended up getting certified in hypnotherapy and timeline therapy and neurolinguistic programming. Um, and so I started working as a nurse and there was all these patients. I'm getting to your question of how did you become a coach? Yeah. All these patients. Take, hey, take, take as long as you need to. I'm enjoying this story. Don't <laughs> okay, worry. Great. All of these <laughs> patients, like this one guy came in this one night, Xander, I was a brand new nurse and I was admitting this patient to the hospital and he probably weighed like 300 and some odd pounds and he had kidney failure and he was like mm. almost crying. And he was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. He was like. I've tried everything to lose the weight. I can't do it. He's like, I can't play with my kids anymore. I'm miserable, like this whole thing. And I was in this like conflict of, cause it's like, do I tell him about the hypnosis? Yeah. Like I can completely change yeah. my life. Am I allowed to? Like, so I took the risk and I was just like, was like, hey, well, gotta tell you about this. He came back into the hospital like six months later and was readmitted for something else. And I like stumbled upon him. I didn't know he was there. And he was like, I was hoping that I'd see you. He was like, I've lost 65 pounds. I'm off three blood pre pressure medications. Like it's all because, and I was like, okay, like, is this actually like, this isn't just me that it's working for? Like, that's pretty amazing. And I'm then, not and just, then, I'm not just the crazy hypnosis. Lady. Right, exactly. It's like kind of like keeping it on the DL. Like yeah. it might just be me, you know what I mean? But like mm. other people started to have results with that, that I was sharing it with. Um, so I was working as a nurse. I kind of stumbled into coaching. I had a friend's mom say to me, like, she came into the room um, when my friend and I were hanging out in high school. And she was like, girls, don't let anyone ever tell you you can't do what you love for a living and make a damn good living at it. She like hangs up the phone. Like she just got off the phone. So when I was working as a nurse and I was like, I can't do this forever. For whatever reason, that memory popped in my head. And my friend's mom saying, that, I was like, whatever that lady is doing. Let's just follow that because that looked great. Yeah. And I called her up and she was like, yeah, coaching. This is where I got certified. Da, da, da. So I ended up enrolling into that program. I dropped out of my graduate degree program because I was like, coaching is amazing. I love it. I couldn't yeah. get enough of it. <laughs> like, um, and then I just started practicing with clients because I didn't know what I was going to coach about or anything. Yeah. I was starting to practice with them just like about hypnosis and about weight loss because I had enough experience. And then finally one day these practice, practice clients were like, Leslie, like we don't want you to teach us about hypnosis. We just want you to hypnotize us. And at the time I didn't have any certifications and it was like over the phone coaching, practicing. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll just try what I did with myself. So then I do it over the phone. And then the next week they came back to me. They're like, whatever you did last week, do it again. Like, that was amazing. I didn't think about food all week. Like I was totally yeah. free. And I was like, so then I started Googling like hypnotherapists that work over the phone. It was like all these hypnotherapists work over the phone, great results. And then that's when I was like, let me just keep going with this. So yeah, every step of the way has just been like me, like, following my own passion and like doing what works for me and then just sharing it with other people and then just like following that over and over when, again and making it better and better. So when, when was the moment that you like really committed to doing this full time, like really going for it? When was that? Wow. In 2015, I left my nursing job. I knew yeah. that I wanted to do it, but it was probably the scariest thing that I ever did in my whole life. Cause I grew yeah. up in a family where it was like benefits, insurance. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, you, you quit, you quit your job in 2015. Yeah. You're going after this coaching thing. Give me, give me like a, like a timeline over the next, like, you know, three, four years. Like, 
you know, is it, is it all rainbows and daisies? Like what, what's going on there? I hope we know the answer to that is absolutely <laughs> not. So I was smart. Well, I think, I think that's important. I think that's a really important thing. Cause I think so important. I, I was a lot I of was... coaches, a lot of coaches, especially in, in my opinion, right. Especially like with the way that the interwebs is, it's so easy to become a coach mm-hmm. or yeah. to get into the online space. Right. And I think people underestimate the, the work that's necessary, the trials, the tribulations, the ups, the downs, right? Like what it actually takes to become a successful coach long term. Right. So yeah, I'd love to hear your journey. Yeah, for sure. So call it luck, call it me being smart, right place, right time. Like in the time that I was training to be a coach, I was subscribing to like every online person's email list, like just following everybody. And I ended up on one person's email list and she was doing like a free webinar or something. And she was um, trained in neuro-linguistic programming and this kind of stuff. And I um, heard her walk somebody through like this thing where she was, um, she was doing a form of muscle testing, which is like another inner block, you know, clearing kind of modality. And so the thing that I was testing for myself was I want to make 200 K per year. And I ended up like, crying on this woman's like practice call with this other woman like I was just following along and it turns out like this whole thing of like I can't make more money than my dad came up for me because he's worked harder than me and I can't make him look bad yeah and it was like realizing that like if I didn't clear stuff like that I was never gonna be successful because that like you always say the 95 percent of the results that you get in your life is based on what's from that time of life yeah you know so Um, anyway, as soon as I left nursing, I ended up joining up with this woman's mastermind group and her, um, whole thing was about being happy in business. And so a lot of the work that she did though, to support us in getting there was doing all the inner kind of work and unblocking that stuff and then taking the actions on the business. Um, so, so I, the whole time along my path, I've been investing in other coaches, following the stuff that they're doing, yeah. incorporating that in my own way into my own practice, you know, doing my own inner work, all that kind of stuff. For four years. Oh yeah. Well, I think, I think one of the, one of, one of the biggest things, you know, and, and still going through it now, I should say, right? Like constantly. Yeah. Constantly. Um, I think one of the big things that I think a, so many coaches misunderstand, because obviously we work with a lot of mindset coaches, transformational coaches, people that you know, do work with trauma and, and, and emotional work and things like that. I think the biggest mistake that a coach can make is that they think that they're done with like the work. Oh, gosh. Are there really coaches that think that? <laughs> I, we've, we've heard it before, right? Oh, yeah. I've got the mindset work done. Like, I'm good. I, you know, it just needs to learn like this, this, and this. And I'm like, every time I hear that, I'm like, I'm like if you had the mindset work done, if you were, if you were done with it all, yeah. you'd be everywhere you want to be. Yeah, well, it's that whole concept of like, you know, information only gets you so far. You're just ticking the boxes of saying like, did that, did that, did that. But it's the, it's being on the court. It's playing the game. It's taking the actions and dealing with whatever comes up as you keep choosing to up level your business and your life all the time. Mm -hmm. So what were, you know, along that journey, what were some of your biggest blocks that came up? Maybe, maybe some blocks that just like you mentioned, you got into information gathering mode for a short time. Uh, you thought you could do it on your own perfection paralysis, you know, all these, all these different blocks that we see all the time with starting entrepreneurs. What were some of the big ones that came up for you? Probably one of the biggest ones was my scarcity mindset Yeah. of just not enough and being afraid of running out of money. Yeah. Um, debt was not something that was, you know, openly, you know, wasn't looked at as like, Oh, this is just one possible Avenue for you getting where you want to go. It was like, at all costs avoid this thing like never let that happen like pay off your bills immediately like and it just caused me to play really like a lot smaller than i could have for a really long time um so i I I, I always tell people about that one right like the the fear of debt i think that and tell me your thoughts on this being someone who's cleared a lot of past blocks but i think that stems from especially from people that i've noticed um, you know, maybe they've gotten into student loan debt, right? So you as a nurse, maybe you had some student loan debt. I, you know, as an engineer in college, like I paid for my own college, paid for my own living for so long. And then, you know, when I worked in a nine to five and finally paid off this debt, which I viewed as a sunk cost, right? It didn't, it didn't teach me what I wanted to do with my life. It didn't get me to that end destination. I viewed it as a big waste. 
right? And it created this, this fear for a while of like, you know, people say like investing in yourself is necessary, but like my subconscious didn't view it as an invested investment. Mm-hmm. It viewed it as a sunk cost, as lost money, mm-hmm. right? Like, I'd love to hear your take on that. Yeah, well, I remember the first time I made like a $4,000 investment into coaching. And I just like, I walked away from that, you know, sales conversation, like, let me think about that. And I remember I had a conversation with myself and I was like, okay, a year from now, if I don't do this, am I going to be in a better situation than I was before, like closer to my goal? Or am I going to still be in the same place? Yeah. And because my answer was, I'm going to be closer, then that was what had me take that leap. Yeah. Um, and it's just, I feel like all of the decisions that I make and the investments that I make, it just comes from that place. Like, is this going to get me? And the leaders that I choose yourself included of like, okay, does he have what I want? Does she have what I want? You know? And it's like, I'm just, whatever they offer, I'm going to find a way to do it. Um, because (laughs) why reinvent the wheel? You know, Mm -hmm. if they have what I want, then I'm just going to get there faster. Yeah. Right. Like it's uh, you know, one of my, one of my mentors, uh, Bedros, he says it's time collapsing. Mm. Right. So it's like, you can take, you can take what's taken, you know, what's taken me three years. And, you know, I think I've invested now over $400,000 in my own personal development and masterminds and coaching and programs and all these things. Right. You can then take all of that and and expedite it for you in a much shorter amount of time. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's time collapses and time is our most valuable resource there. So exactly. It's like people. And I think that's where my nursing career really helped me as well is because I'd see patients that were on their deathbeds at like 55 years old. Yeah. And they're saying to me, like, if I only knew that my life was this short, I would have done so many things differently. And yeah. it's like, oh yeah, that's right. We die. <laughs> and oh yeah, that's right. We don't know when that's going to happen. And you know, and it's well, like, yeah. It sounds it sounds morbid, but like that's really that like that understanding of our own mortality, right? Really does it provokes you to acting more purposefully and less from a place of fear. Right? Because I think so many of the decisions we make are like subconsciously because we think it's going to kill us, right? But then when you realize that someday we will actually die and this little decision is not going to cause it, mm-hmm. but by the time you reach that and timeline are you going to look back and you're going to regret this decision or are you going to be happy you made this decision 100 percent. yeah you can always go and like go into the future self and be like what would my you know 90 year old self say on my you know on their deathbed like should i do this or should i not and it's like yeah do it you know what are you waiting for yeah people are just waiting and we don't know how much time that we have i also think from a service perspective like if you're somebody and i think all coaches are like who really cares about doing good work in the world and you want to make an impact in the world and all that kind of stuff. In my experience, you have to do your personal bucket list items as soon as possible so that you then have the um, presence, the space, the like okayness to sit your butt down and to just do like taking care of other people and you're not like, there's no bad feelings about that. Yeah. I had to travel the world for two years because it was something that I always said I wanted to do. It wasn't do going that, anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. If I, what, if I didn't do that, it was only yeah. going to get harder a, cause one day I'll have a family one day and I can't just go freely travel the world and whatever. It's like, when do I think I'm going to do this thing? Yeah. Like, oh, so, I, it's I, so important. I love that you just said that because I, I think that's a huge takeaway for people because so many coaches like to view themselves as service oriented people. They want to serve others, but there's almost a guilt. Yes. There's a, there's a guilt for doing what you want to do for, for, you know, not traveling, for not taking care of yourself, for not making the money you want to make or buying the car you want to buy or whatever it is. There's a guilt behind it because you think as a good person, I should, you know, I should do everything for others. But until you realize like that desire is not going away until it's like, it's fulfilled essentially. Right. Like you got to do the damn thing. We had, I had a, uh, I'm in, I'm in another mastermind with, um, uh, his name's Walter O'Brien. He's the clinically tested smartest man alive. So it was like 197 IQ. Albert Einstein was a 162. I think this guy's 197. He like hacked NASA at the age of 15 to get like the blueprints of the space shuttle on his wall. And I was talking to him and he said, probably the most important thing for, uh, for people to understand if they want to have a big impact is 
first you must be selfish. Then you can serve others. And it's exactly what you just said. He said, he's like, first you have to, you have to accomplish the things you want to accomplish Mm -hmm. before you can actually serve others. And he's like, I'm not, he's like, I'm not saying this out of like theory. This guy's 197 IQ. He's like, I'm saying this out of like simple, like, um, frameworks that he's seen like human nature for you to actually be successful and serving others. You have to be selfish first. Which yeah. Is crazy. Oh my God. I absolutely love that. That's absolutely been my experience. Cause it's like, if there's that, it's almost, it's like quantum physics. I mean, it's integrity. Yeah. It's the whole <laughs> energy thing. So it's like, if you're like, I guess just check yourself of like the service orient oriented mindset of like, am I doing this because I think that I'm a bad person if I don't like, if you're not honoring your desires, I teach my clients that three step process of the amp thing. So the first thing is like, allow yourself to actually give yourself permission to have what it is that you want. Cause then you're just working up over the top of my dream. So, okay, this is a really good example. Um, I remember like, as I was trying to really build my business from, from 2015 till now, like I was, I was trying to work really hard to make that money so that I could travel the world. But it's like, actually the reverse is true where it's like, just make the statement to the universe and yourself. Like I am going to travel the world, even if I don't have the money now, I don't know how it's going to happen. And then the money follows. So it's like, get really clear for yourself about what you want. I don't care if it's a Tesla or a Jaguar or a house or a traveling. I don't care what it is, but just be honest with yourself and other people that you're selfishly doing that for yourself, but know that it's actually not selfish at all. Like that's going to be your path to making a difference. I I love that you're saying this right now because and I want to share, can I share this with everybody that like, you're not just saying this to tell other people to do this. You and I literally did this this last month, right? Like 45 days ago, 45, like 30, 30 to 40 days ago, you told me, Xander, I want to buy a new home, mm-hmm. right? Like yeah. that was your, that was your intention. That was your reason. You're like, I want to buy a new home. I found a new, is it like Walnut Creek? Where is it? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like Very you, you found this beautiful dream home in Walnut Creek and you're like, I need 50 grand to make this happen. Right. So you're like, fuck it. We're making 50 grand in December. We're doing it. (laughs) Right. But it was like, I'm buying this home one way or another. So I better make the money to actually make it happen. Right. Exactly. So it's rather than like, I'm just going to make 50 grand to make 50 grand. Like I'm not motivated by just a number like that. Like, why am I making 50 grand? So as soon as I knew that I wanted to travel the world, or as soon as I knew that I wanted to buy a house, then it's like, okay, we have a goal and it's something that I want. So then let the energy follow that. And let's see what number we come out with at the end. Because I think another important thing that people know is that there is a certain level of detachment from that outcome that after you make the goal, you also have to let go of it and just get in service and make yeah. those daily commitments. And so what exactly do you mean by that? Expand on that. You, you create the goal. Cause I think I, like, I know what you're saying mm-hmm. and I think this is hugely important, but I would love, I would love for you to explain what you mean by making the goal, creating the goal and kind of disassociating from it, detaching from it. Like, could you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, well, I remember an interview with Louise Hay or someone talking about an an interview they had with her. And she was saying how she had like a vision board of her private jet that she was going to have one day. Yeah. And somebody asked her about that. She's like, I just know that I'm going to have that one day. She's like, I don't know how I'm going to have it. I'm not thinking about it all the time. I'm not doing that, but I'm just waiting for it to come in. And (laughs) She was saying that that's the way that she, and she eventually did have her own private jet, you know? So it's like allowing yourself. And I loved when you um, shared about the different examples of the really successful people and how they 100% believe that they could have whatever kind of dream life for themselves that they wanted, like that never failed. Yeah, It's like just owning that that can happen. But if you're not actually like to anything that you, tr- that you focus on that hard and are like that, like, it's almost like, Oh my God, if I don't have it, I'm going to fail or whatever. And that's the big, that's the big problem right there. It's like, huh. it's like, you know, you set this goal, but then you're like, but what if I don't hit the goal? Does that mean I'm not good enough? Now I'm not, now I'm not worthy now. I'm, and so now what you're focusing on, you're actually focusing on the fact that you don't have it mm-hmm. right. Rather than just setting the intention and allowing that to happen the whole in between time, you're focusing on how you're not good enough. You're not worthy. You don't have this thing. Right. And that ends up being the the thing that comes about in people's lives is just more of that. 
Yeah. And law of attraction. I mean, there's science behind it now that's just proving it more and more. So just be living as if you already have that private jet now, or you already are traveling the world now and doing whatever amount of that you can every day. Yeah. Um, and just feeling that way, it's going to attract that so much sooner. What do you think, what do you think allowed you as a person to start to emotionally detach from that? Is it the, the hypnosis work, the psychosomatic work that sort of, you know, kind of allows you to not have the attachment to that goal. Cause I think that's, that might be the biggest problem for most people. Mm, yeah. And every time looks a little bit different. And I think we, as human beings, there's always a certain amount of attachment that happens. The hypnosis definitely helps. The inner work definitely helps. So whenever I feel something in my body that feels like, eh, like, eh, I have to have that, you know, that same like energetic cord with the food. And it's just like, yeah. oh, I can't stop myself. Anything that feels that crazy in my body I just kind of immediately now have the awareness of knowing, okay, something else is going on with that. And it would really behoove me to sit down and do some of the inner work or a session like I lead my clients through or yeah. you know, get to the core level of like, and it's usually like, dad left me when I was five, when he had to go to work and it meant that he didn't care about me. So now yeah. I feel like I'm like this, you know what I mean? Like we all yeah. have the same stuff. Um, so it's just understanding um, that whenever you're that attached to anything and you feel like it's almost becoming an obsession to slow down, there are tools. And if you don't have those tools, get those tools or find yeah. that support to be able to approach it in a different way so that you can kind of enter that surrender place of like, okay, I'm good enough even if that doesn't happen. And all I know to do in this moment is take these action steps along the way to get there yeah. and commit to that. Like every single time that I've manifested a large amount of money, including this, I've never calculated the money. The yeah. same thing with weight loss. Anytime that I've ever like been like at this amazing weight and it's felt so effortless, I wasn't paying attention to the weight, you know? So it's like, just fall in love with your life, take the actions every day. And then I wake up and I'm like, oh, let me calculate my money. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm at 46K for, and I told the under 50, you know, like, how did that happen? Like right yeah. before I started traveling, I was like, okay, I want to make $10,000 to start traveling the world. And yeah. it was like, then I had my best summer ever in business summer, which who gets the best summer ever in business, but it was because I was following my yeah. passion and dream. And then all of a sudden, like I look at my bank account the day before I needed to commit to the people I was traveling with. And I had exactly $10,000. Yeah. It's just amazing. Oh man. So that, that being said, let's, let's talk about the last, the, the last month or so, the last couple of months. Um, tell me, tell me what, what specifically you've done as a coach that's really allowed you to you know, make 45 grand in the month of December, which is notoriously slow for most coaches. What, what have you done that could really, you know, help coaches understand and, and learn from you and, and how much you've grown to this point now? <sighs> So many different things. Um, <laughs> great so many different great things. answer. <laughs> it's really like being so hyper vigilant and present with every moment and what needs to be done every day. Um, but obviously, number one, mindset work. You know, it's like every day, like I don't miss that work mm -hmm. and your program, like doing that mindset work or whatever mindset work that I have. You know, um, also the five by five by five tool that you teach in your program. Awesome. Like having an account, I have a mindset accountability buddy and I have a, um, like a working accountability buddy for yeah. like the, the five goals per day. So every single day, like my communication with other people, like outside of this little circle that I've chosen to have, of just like, we do mindset work together and they're like my friend, you know, we yeah. do accountability work together and you're my friend. Like that's my social needs are met, you know? Like yeah. my relationship gets my needs. Like, but other than that, it's very little, like, because I choose this, this is what gives me joy. It's literally yeah. my passion right now. Um, so but that's it's, it's, also it's so, yeah, like focus and a combination of, you know, not just the mindset work, but the tactical stuff that comes with it too. Yeah. Like being really, um, aware of where you're putting your attention and energy. Like yeah. is that is hanging out with that friend group really getting me closer to what it is that I really want and like being willing to like, cut that stuff out um, or anything like that. I actually, so even to get to this point, Xander, I had to like for myself, like I used to be really strict about like what I was eating and stuff to keep my body in a certain way. Cause that used to be my passion. Yeah. But I got really clear that in order for me to have this transformation to really step into my service as much as I could, like I had to let go of that stuff a little bit and I gained yeah. some weight and I had to deal with all those fears and stuff. 
but like because I became more free with myself and gave myself permission for that and like let go of the fears of what other people were going to think if I gain weight it also helped me to get here so yeah um those things coming to all the Q&A calls and like really like even the things that I'd be like oh that's probably fine like I've been catching myself that I'd be like oh like I can just do that call and I'd be like I'm just gonna run it by Xander you know what I mean and like I every single time get like something from you that I wasn't gonna do before so definitely asking for that help and getting a second pair of eyes from an expert on what it is that I was gonna do um because you know one of my one of my uh one of my favorite sayings from one of my mentors he says we all learn from the school of hard knocks you learn from success and you learn from failure right? But you don't have to just learn from your successes and your failures. Mm. So if you can, if you can get somebody else to, you know, like if you're about to do something and just get somebody else to tell you, yeah, don't do it this way because here's what'll happen. Do it this way because this is why, and here's what'll happen this way. It'd save you months. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is just like my commitment to doing that, like mm. really deep visceral subconscious mind clearing yeah. work on a regular basis has made a huge difference, I think, because it's like really getting past like this, this action that I'm taking is motivated by my childhood self that feels like I never got enough love in my life. You know what I mean? Like that doesn't serve somebody when you're taking a stand for their life. Like you can't, you know, come from that place when you're yeah. having these kinds of, you know, real conversations with people. So the it's, more I get yeah, my the, the, childhood. The five year old the five year old Leslie running your life right now, right? Like how yeah. hilarious is that? Yeah, the five year old Leslie trying to get somebody to say yes to working with her so that she feels like her love needs are met versus like, I don't need love needs. I need you to like be happy. Like it's yep. your choice, you know? It's just that stand that I take for clients because I don't need them you yeah. know, but I am going to just give them everything that I'm thinking about what is going to change their life and, you know, give it to them. Yeah. Um, in whatever way, maybe they can hear it, maybe they can't, but I'm going to do the best I can to translate that over. Um, that's made a big difference. Oh, that's huge. Any, any last pieces of advice you would give like a starting coach out there? Just be willing to ask for help. It doesn't have to be hard. Um, look at your reasons for why, like, you know, Xander's the example of you made however much money in just a small amount of time, like you can create something really fast. So if you're not creating the thing that you want really fast, whatever it is, business, relationships, health, like really take, have a good look and conversation with yourself about why you're not doing that fast. Cause it doesn't have to be hard. And if you're willing to go past your fears and invest in yourself and ask for help and just take the actions and make a decision that you're going to have what it is that you want, you'll get there. But you have to keep just that commitment to yourself of I can have it and I'm just going to keep going until I get that. I love that, right? It's like, well, if I'm not going to quit and it's not going to kill me, there's really only one outcome. Eventually, yeah. you're, eventually you're going to get there, right? <laughs> Yeah. So why not spend money now or hire that coach now or start doing the inner work now? You know, I, I remember there was one client that I met through your program, Xander, so your client, and I felt so bad for him because like he was doing everything right. He was doing everything that you said, like he was doing everything, everything, everything. So I reached out and I was like, listen, like if you want to do, like, I'm happy to do a session with you. Like your success is my success, you know? Yeah. We did a session and he ends up like having this huge breakthrough. And he was like, I realized that the reason I'm not successful on these calls is because there's this part of me that's still scared to be seen and to be vulnerable. And because of yeah. this call with you, like, you had to see me like cry like a baby or like whatever. <laughs> He's like, I'm not scared anymore. And like, he like went and he had a sale that was successful after. So it's like, yeah, just, yeah. It's so amazing. Permission to clear those blocks and get. I, I think that's huge, right? Like people have to give themselves permission to do the, the deep hard work of like clearing out your past shit. Right. Cause it's not, it's not easy. It's not always fun. There's always more to do, but the more that you do it, the, you know, the more you let go of this past baggage, the simpler it is to keep walking forward. 100%. And then it's like, you just get to take everything that comes at you in life less and less seriously because it's like, okay, yeah. well, I got triggered. Well, okay. I just need to schedule a session for that. Okay. Yeah. Like it's not a big deal. It's just, you just understand after a while that like whatever is stopping you, there's a solution for that. And you can just yeah. keep moving forward and fast. Yeah. I love that. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. This has been, this has been amazing. Um, so really grateful to have you on the show today. 
Um, so I did, I did go ahead and post the, uh, the link for your Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash wild success coaching. Uh, Leslie, is there anywhere else that people can follow you, learn more about what you do? Obviously, if there's anybody looking for uh, some help with weight loss, is there anywhere else we want to send them or is that where we want to go? Yeah, for sure. Um, that's an easy place to go. You can go through that. It'll ask you a couple questions and I usually make it a habit to reaching out to people who fill that out anyway. So um, if you can find me on Facebook, I think my profile is pretty public. Definitely feel free to add me and just send me a personal message. I'm happy to answer that way too. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for sharing, Leslie. Yeah, um, I, I got a ton of nuggets out of this one. I hope everybody else did too. Uh, so for everybody, everybody out there in uh, podcast land, thank you for tuning in. If you want to catch these interviews live, uh, you can go ahead and join our Facebook group at xanderfryer.com forward slash FB group. Uh, and if you guys yourselves need some help getting your coaching business up and running, you can check out our high impact coaching launch program. Uh, go to xanderfryer.com forward slash apply. And you can put together, you can go through a quick questionnaire. We can hop on a 15 minute call, see you know, where you're at, what's working, what's not working, obviously uh, what you might need to focus on to get your business up and running as well. Uh, so thanks again, Leslie. This has been awesome. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting this to more people. Awesome. Me too. Thanks so much. Of course.